Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be a review and tutorial using the James Charles X Morphe eyeshadow palette, the Unleash Your Inner Artist palette. I have it right here. It's been sitting in the box ever since I got it. I got it actually on the day of the very first launch. I stalked that website and I got it at 9 a.m. as soon as it launched and I'm so excited to finally be sitting down and playing with it and showing you this look but I'm more excited more than anything to just sit down and talk about the look that I have going on right now because it's something completely different from anything that I've ever done in my channel and I've been I've been wanting to do a colorful look like this one because just diving into Instagram really gets like your creative juices flowing and it really gets you to like kind of you're I was like super curious just seeing all of these colorful and creative looks that come on Instagram every single Single day it just gets me excited about creating new looks but anywho aside from all of that I feel kind of nervous about making this video because I'm not quite sure whether or not to to talk about the the whole controversy and honestly the mess that happened after this palette was released. I feel a little bit sad of some situations that have happened. I will touch on some, but I'm mostly going to be talking about how I feel about those. I might give a little bit of unsolicited advice, of course, coming from a big sister, literally. I feel like I want to talk about a little bit about the situation coming from like a sister perspective, literally. I'm not using the sister lingo, but I really want to give like some advice and really share like how how I felt after all of that happened because I do feel like it takes away from the palette itself because the palette it's good and it I mean obviously it took me um, to a whole another level of comfort uh, this is way outside of my comfort zone and I feel like it takes away from the product everything that happened afterwards but we're gonna chat about all of that and before we get started please don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel before you leave and yeah that's what we're gonna be doing today and one more thing that I didn't want to mention is that this look is actually inspired by the look that James Charles did on Liza Koshi recently I was it did come out super different obviously it's not exactly the same it's like kind of like the whole when you order it online versus when you get it situation <laughs> I know it's kind of different but I did get inspiration from that and I know that she asked James to do that look because she saw a previous James Charles picture on his Instagram so that's where the inspiration came from that's how I knew what colors to use and what colors to combine because I definitely did want to do a dive on as much color as I could when it comes to this palette because it's a colorful palette and I did want to do a rainbow look I didn't want to do something super bronzy or super basic so I went all out and that was the perfect look I really wanted to do something with yellow all, all, all over my lids and that look in particular just drew me in and I knew that was the one to do for my channel. So now without further ado, if you want to see how I created this look, my thoughts and opinions when it comes to the Morphe X James Charles palette, then please stay on and keep on watching. All right, so where shall we start <laughs> with this palette? Like I mentioned in the beginning, I ordered this palette the moment that it came out. I ordered it right at 9 a.m. as soon as it launched. And I basically was drawn to this palette because I don't own a palette that's completely colorful, That's that's got all of the colors of the rainbow on it. So I knew that this was a palette that would come in super handy for me. And besides all of that, it's it's also the fact that I know Morphe shadows because I own the Jaclyn Hill X Morphe palette and I do own other Morphe palettes so I knew their formulas they're okay they're good actually and um, two of their palettes the Jaclyn Hill is one of my favorites and the 35 F palette the fall one it has a lot of shimmers in there that one is also one of my favorites so I was very optimistic when it comes to just Morphe eyeshadows by themselves so when this palette was revealed field I was instantly drawn to it because again I would get every single color of the rainbow in one palette I was interested in the 35b before this one was released but I but then I found out that that one was discontinued or something like that so I would have bought that one 
but then this one does have white and black and neutral colors in there so i would have honestly i would have picked this one over the 35b now that i know how that one looked versus this one now this is the palette right here here it's already out of the box I already took the insert out this is the box that it came in and it did come with some bubble wrap inside as well and then once again here is how the palette looks and just to give you a comparison in size this palette is pretty large um, so here is the Jaclyn Hill palette in comparison to this one this is the size of the Jaclyn Hill one and as you can see the James Charles is quite larger than that now this is a palette that I would actually travel with I can actually put it on my laptop sleeve and it, I think it would like stay nice and protected in there and it wouldn't cause any damage to it. I wish however that it came with a mirror. It doesn't come with a mirror inside. It is magnetized and it does come with a sleeve with this insert with the shade names on it. So when you open her up, this is what it looks like inside if you haven't seen it yet. I do wish it came with a mirror because I feel like if um, traveling with it, I would love to put it like on a desk like this stand it up like that and just get ready with a mirror in here but that's okay i know the jacqueline hill one i wish there was a mirror in there too now the insert in here i don't like at all i wish that the shade names would come underneath the actual shades in here because i as i was doing this tutorial i kept wanting to refer to the shade names and i i wanted to have a good reference of what the shade names are and even like following his tutorial with liza Koshi. I wanted to know what shades he used on her and um, it was kind of like difficult because then once you take off the insert from there and you want to refer to a shade in here you have to put the sleeve back in but then it's not facing the right way so you have to like flip it around anywho I just wish the shade names were in here now let's talk a little bit about what happened after the palette was released if you want to jump straight ahead into the tutorial and the walkthrough of this eyeshadow look I will leave a timestamp right here but for now I wanted to talk about a few things about what happened after the launch now we all know that the very first thing that happened once the palette was released was the whole thing with the swatches and as far as swatches that wasn't a very huge deal breaker for me or it didn't like steer me away from the palette um, by any means when it comes to swatches I'm always of the mindset of if you're not sure about what the quality of the of the actual shadows are you can always just wait it would be okay for you to wait until the palette is in stores and swatch it for yourself and see how it is or if you want to get the palette right away because i know that's the big thing with people they want to be the first ones to get it and they don't want to wait until it's in stores or anything like that so buy it and then if you don't like it all you can always return it and get a full refund to me i'm not very trusting with um, with swatches because I've seen palettes and I've been witness of palettes that can swatch beautifully but they're not gonna perform the same way in the eyes so uh, swatches are not a good reference point for me when it comes to shadows to me I'd rather you tell me how I'm supposed to use the eyeshadows how how they blend for me swatches are more just to get a reference as to what the color is going to look like on my skin tone and how how much I have to build it to get that full opacity and how much fallout it might have. For instance, when I'm swatching shimmers, is it going to take me a lot to build it because then I'm not gonna uh, use it on the eyes after foundation because I am gonna be concerned over fallout and things like that that's why I look at swatches I look at swatches and even with matte colors if that if I'm swatching a matte and it's not and it's sheer the first time that I swatch it then I can go in a second time and see how much I have to build it to get that full opacity and again that's gonna let me know whether if this is a transition color if this is a color that I can trust on the lid and so on I'm not gonna do swatches in this video because I feel that there are tons of reviews out there with swatches I am gonna include a few that do have swatches down in the description down below and I don't feel like swatches are a really good representation on how the shadows are gonna work on the eyes I'm only gonna speak about how the colors that I use today perform in the eyes and leave it at that but once again you can refer 
refer to those links in the description down below for swatches. So that was my thing with the whole swatch situation. What did sadden me a little bit was his whole response to the situation. I feel that uh, he got a little bit too defensive with the entire situation, I feel like. And I completely understand, you know, it's his baby, it's his palette. He's releasing the his very first uh, makeup product to the entire world, to millions of people. Um, but the fact that he keeps wanting to defend it, it's, it kind of like bumps me out a little bit and, and it disappoints me a little bit about him because it reminds me a lot of like the situation when he did the Ariana Grande um, Goddess of Woman cover and then Tristan Paredes, which if you haven't seen his channel, it's I love him so much. It's so, it, his channel is amazing. Um, he did a reaction to his singing and Tristan was very frustrated um, at the way that he sang and then James got a, got super defensive about it because he does he said it he's a very competitive person and he doesn't take criticism very well and but at the same time he's really young um, I'm kind of speaking from a big sister <laughs> perspective but I feel that he came across a little bit way too defensive when I saw that he had gone into other videos and started responding in the comments to videos explaining himself having to constantly and so much explain himself and defend this palette it's like see it from a different angle see it from the fact that you've sold out not once not twice not three times I believe I, I think more than that he sold out out of this palette and people are using it and people are uploading looks like focus on the people that are really enjoying your product and that are giving you compliments on it and that are enjoying it and loving it and playing with it i feel a little bit that he's forgetting about his subscribers and the people that really love him me included but these are the things that he does that kind of like sadden me a little bit and i want to like like <laughs> like shake him a little bit and be like james just take the criticism if there's hate unnecessary hate towards the palette just there's always going to be that like there's no escaping it there's no but you're above that and that comes with the territory when you're doing you're killing it when you're being successful there's always going to be that and honestly i can't come from a place where i can relate to, <laughs> to releasing a palette to millions of people of course i can't relate to that but what i will say it's that it kind of reminds me when you're planning a wedding let's say you're planning a wedding like me that i planned my wedding in 2017 an entire year worths of planning crying stressing trying to get every single thing perfectly you want to plan for the food you plan for the music you plan for all of these little things you make things i made a lot of different things for my wedding i made floral arrangements i made i worked so so hard for that wedding and then when the day happens you put on your wedding for hundreds of it was like a hundred people in my wedding you put on this wedding for all of these people and then in the end you get people that are like mm, i didn't like the food mm, i wish you would have had this it's kind of when you put on a wedding for all of these people and then you get comments like Ugh, the dress doesn't look that way on her or Ugh. you know what i mean so it's like it's very similar in my opinion to that where you're never gonna make everyone happy but in the end you're kind of forgetting to like the whole purpose behind putting that out there the whole point of putting out a wedding is not to make everyone else happy it's because you're getting married and the point of releasing a palette to millions of people it's because it's your passion and this is your baby and it was your big day too you know what i mean so it's like don't take away from that enjoy it it's out there it's already out there enjoy it it's out in the world people are loving it and just enjoy all of that treasure that and it's only gonna boost you even forward and into bigger things because james is talented i mean you can't deny that the guy has talent and i am very sister proud of everything that like all of the videos that he does he always puts so much uh, 
so much work into them and they're always like super perfect you can tell he's a perfectionist i wish i would <laughs> i would be like that in my videos but he's very talented he's very smart he has a business smart brain he's very driven in business and you can tell that so I don't know I just feel and this is gonna come with time it is going to be a learning experience from him and I just it did sadden me a little bit his like reactions to the whole uh, to a lot of the things that happened I'm not gonna go into how the shadows are formulated or what ingredients are in these shadows because I have no idea about any of that I'm not an expert in any of that but I will link Jen Love's reviews video on that I saw Raw Beauty Christie's um, review of this palette and she mentioned that Jen Love's reviews has a really good video on the whole formulation and she really goes in depth about all of that because she really she does have experience when it comes to formulation and the science behind eyeshadows so I will link her video down below if you want a really good explanation on ingredients and things like that but that's all I'm gonna say for now that was my unsolicited sister advice for James but now we're gonna dive into the eye look that I have going on right now because I absolutely love how it came out and might have not turned out to be exactly the same <laughs> as the one he did to um, Liza Koshi but I absolutely love I've never done something like this in my channel in playing with makeup even so I absolutely love it I can't wait to take pictures of it post them on Instagram etc <laughs> all right so let's jump straight into how I created this eyeshadow look today and the very first thing that I did was prime my eyelids using the Urban Decay eyeshadow primer potion that's the primer that I always used and I set it down all over my lid I'm not gonna lie when he did the reveal video I did get a little bit nervous when he was talking about that when he was talking about the primers um, I believe he recommended the Mac um, painterly paint pot and the morphe primer to use but I I don't like the idea of having to buy a specific product to use with another product I already spent 40 bucks on this palette and I I just don't like the of idea of having to buy another specific product to make this one work the um, urban decay eyeshadow primer potion one it's the one that I always use so I used it for this look however I did notice a difference because when I went in in this eye I set down the primer and then I just patted it down all the way through my eyelid and then I went in with the shadow and it was pigmented it did have a lot of power whereas when I went in with this eye I forgot to use primer when I first went in with the purple on my outer V and it wasn't doing what it did to this one but I took it off and then I put on the primer and once I had that kind of like wet sticky base all over the lid and then I went in again with the purple it did give me that eyeshadow power that this one gave me in the first place so I do see how that works and I believe this is the technique that have you seen Nikki tutorials or Mama Mama Mitchell <laughs> if you seen either of their videos that's the technique that they use all of the time and I've never actually done that before and when it comes to makeup application so I decided to try it it worked for me I didn't have any issues with the dark purple I know that's the one that some people have had um, issues with I didn't have any and again this is coming from someone who is a regular user of makeup I'm not a makeup artist and that's another thing that when he said that he released this um, this makeup palette for artists only I was kind of like mm. <laughs> it made me feel kind of like not cool enough for his palette but anywho I'll just ignore that and keep going <laughs> using the palette so once I had the primer all over my lid I went in with the color escape which is that again that dark purple that a lot of people had issues with I did what sister James told us to do which use a brush and really stamp it on first and then just diffuse the edges a little bit and that seemed to help I really took my time to really pack on that color and just diffuse those edges to get it to the placement that I wanted it on my outer face and then after that I took the shade skip which I'm not gonna lie I was super nervous about using 
using it because of the whole thing that happened and I laid down that color all over the crease again I didn't have any issues with that check on that description box because I will let you know if it does stain the eyes after I remove it I'll let you know all of that so once again I took skip and just laid it down all over the crease and then on top of that crease because I do notice that when it comes to these very colorful eyeshadow looks they take the crease color super high up almost touching the brow bone so I tried that on this look and I was able to get all of the colors that I wanted up on that crease and then above skip I went in with the shade 518 to this orange color and just blended those two colors right here above the crease blended those two colors together and everything was perfectly fine for me I did have to take my time to pack on those mattes to really get that vibrancy that I wanted um, in these shadows when I was watching his videos I noticed that especially Actually, the yellow which is the next one that I'm gonna talk about the color B that one he packed it on the very first time and it was super super vibrant that didn't happen for me um, I'm wondering whether if it was the whole primer thing or how much color was he using in that brush I'm not quite sure but the color B I did use in this inner portion of my eye right here and of course all over the lid but when I wanted to put it right here on this inner portion it did took me a while to really build it maybe it was because of the fluffy brush that I used but I did go back in several times just to really get that color to show up right here so then after that I really wanted to go in really close to my crease and deepen it out a little bit more so I went in with the shade love that which I I literally love that color <laughs> um, so I went in really close with a tiny brush kind of like a pencil brush and I went in really close on the crease just to really deepen it out so that when I would go in to cut it it would be like super defined uh, that contrast with the lid color and the crease color would be like really really defined in there I felt like the color skip was a little bit too light and too bright I wanted something deeper so that's why I chose love that and then once all of that gradient was done right here all or all along the crease I went in and used my handy dandy viral cut crease stamp which is this one right here I did a dedicated video to reviewing this one and my very first impressions on it which I'll link right up here and I used this because I'm not a pro when it comes to cut creases and this is this comes in super handy so I used this with the shape tape and then I used it all over my lid and once I have that guide using the stamp I went in with a flat concealer brush and really touched up that concealer all over the, the lid just patted it down really defined these edges right up here to get really good precision in these colors so once all of the concealer was nice and patted down to where I wanted it I went back in and really defined this outer V and I took that color escape once again and just really like patted it down packed it on all along that outer V and then after that I went in closer to the lid and the second color that I used right there was again the shade love that and I patted in right over here just did a line diffused those edges blended the two colors together and then after that you go in closer to the center of your lid and this color right here is the color rusted and 518 mixed together again doing the same thing using a flat brush this time though and really packing on that color right there almost on the center of the lid and then on the inner portion again almost to the center of the lid just to connect those two colors together was the color B and again to really get that pigmented yellow it did take me a while to really pack it on on my lid I didn't get any fallout however I would have been able to do this look doing foundation first and then eyes but I did eyes first just to be 
just to take um, precaution but I would have been fine if I did my foundation first so once again I packed the shade B all over my lid right here and I love how precise I was able to get on these edges right here and then once I had that I really needed an inner corner highlight and the shade that I used was the color face I saw that that was the shade that James used on Liza for her highlighter too so I actually decided to use the shade face as a highlight today and on the on my forehead right here I used it on my inner corners and I used it on my brow bone too so I used it on my inner corners right here then I did my whole foundation the whole base of my makeup and I'm actually wearing the shade Mary as a blush today I absolutely loved it you do have to be very careful if you're gonna go in there with a blush brush go in super carefully you're gonna pick up a lot of product to just really dust off that excess and go in lightly on your cheeks it's a beautiful blush color and then on top of that I heard him say that the shade literally was a a really good like um, blush topper I used it I didn't like it I thought it was like too exaggerated of a blush for me so I went in actually with the shade sister and just really connected that blush with the highlight and into my bronzer and I loved the shade sister as a blush topper instead of literally so that's what I did with my complexion and the top portion of my lid and now on my lower lash line I used the shade playground on the outer portion right here and to really connect it to that purple on the on the top and I even took just the tiniest bit of escape and really like dragged it on the very outer portion of my lower lash line just to connect and blend those two colors together now on the inner portion of my lower lash line I'm using the shade social blade again this is all that he did with Liza Koshi inspired by that so I did that too and again really packed it on again using dense brushes to really get the most color payout that you can really pack on that color and you'll be able to get really full pigment out of these shadows that way now once again check in that description box and i will let you know if these colors do stain the eyes i've never been stained by eyeshadows before the only time that i've been stained by eyeshadows was with the laura lee party animal palette i used the color purple all over my lid and when I took it out my eyelids were pink <laughs> so that's the only time that I've been stained by eyeshadows but I will let you know in the description if this if these colors do the same thing to my eyes and then from there I went into my waterline using the NYX jumbo pencil in white this one right here just to add a little bit of contrast and to make my eyes look very doll like I love that look I went in with mascara on my bottom lashes and then for my lashes I'm using my kiss ones in the style sultry absolutely love these and then i set everything in place using the morphe continuous setting mist which i love this setting spray i loved the mister in here it's so refreshing and it just covers your entire face in one in one go it doesn't have that aggressive like spritzer in it and it just melts your entire makeup together and it gets rid of that powdery feeling i love this setting spray a lot and those were all of the steps in making this eyeshadow look you guys it did take me about like 20 minutes <laughs> for each eye but it was absolutely worth it again I've never done something like this I've never done a look like this on my eyes of course I'm not wearing this out we're going Christmas shopping today um, and I don't know I, I would feel very self-conscious about wearing a look like this I did wear my pink eyeshadow look um, that I did on my last boxy charm unboxing I did wear that eyeshadow look out and I got a lot of compliments so I was very happy about that so I'll probably step out of my comfort zone a little bit in the future and go maybe with crazier looks out in public not to work though but just out in public and dinner dinner dates with my husband and things like that but I love this eyeshadow look it's so different I'm definitely taking pictures for Instagram and showing it off and I love Love what I was able to do. I have used the palette a few times for work. I've used a couple of the neutral colors all over my crease and used some of the golds like 
this one and this one right here on my lids I packed them on with my fingers but it did take me a while to really pack them on I did have to like dig in the shimmers and really take my time to pack on that colors I do feel like that I have another BH cosmetics palette where I swipe on the shimmer and just pat it on once and it's good to go this one does take me more time to build those shimmers but the color base right here this one I feel like it's different from these two shimmers up here this one was super beautiful as a highlighter you can see it it's it's super stunning I love this shade as an inner corner as a highlight obviously but these do take more packing on I do want to use the rest of the palette more and let you know in about all of that I haven't used the black the white um, a lot of the other neutral colors and here I haven't used those so I do have more to explore about this palette but as far as this eyeshadow look I feel that I used the colors that were causing a lot of buzz or whatever that people were saying that you do need more layering and that they're hard to work with I didn't have any issues with it and I'm not a makeup artist and I was able to nail it because I, I kind of get it and I've seen this technique used before again I watched Nikki tutorials and M -M Mitchell and I watched them and how they apply shadows and I I kind of have that reference point in my brain and how to use them so I didn't have any issues um yes the mattes are gonna take on they're gonna take a lot of packing to get this vibrancy but overall I love the look that I was able to came up with and I hope you liked it too I do recommend this palette if you're someone who's into those creative looks if you love color this is a palette that's gonna come in super handy for you because you get everything in one palette it's good I really like it if you're not sure about it if you're on the fence whether or not to purchase this I I would I would recommend buying it off of Morphe or off of Ulta and then just play with it a little bit if you don't like it you can always return it for a full refund and just really try it out for yourself because I can see how it might not be a palette for everyone and even in stores you can always swatch it in there get a feel for the shadows if doing swatches is something that you go to and that's like your decision making process and buying a shadow then wait for it until it's like in stores swatch it there really take your time it, you don't have to feel like pressured when you're in a store that you can't swatch every single color because you can you can play with them ask a sales assistant to help you out and deciding how to use this palette and things like that I'm sure they're gonna know how to do all of that and they can help you out and answer any questions and one one last thing that I did want to mention in this video is that I do wish that Morphe would stand behind their collaborees or the influencers that they work with in these palettes. I feel that James was left to take on this whole response by himself and where was Morphe? You know what I mean? So it's like I wish that the brand, that the company, this is it is James Charles's palette but Morphe is at the front of this palette they're the ones that are selling it and I wish they would stand behind them more and that they would speak on the ingredients they would speak on instead of just announcing on Instagram about restock really give us information about your products and really invest yourself in explaining to people your formulation and all of these things I don't know I just feel like they should be a little bit more involved whenever scandals or drama stems out out of their releases because even with the whole Jaclyn Hill vault thing where was Morphe? Why didn't Morphe um, speak out on those things? I don't know. It, it's just like my train of thought when it comes to these Morphe and influencer releases. I feel that they step back and they just let the influencers take all of the heat and they don't do anything to back their own products if that makes sense but anywho I think that was everything that I wanted to touch on in this product and that was my unsolicited advice of course to James Charles
Charles and these were my thoughts in this palette this was the look that I was able to come up with and I absolutely love it I hope you do too if you have any questions let me know in those comments down below do you agree with me do you not how was your experience with this palette if you did purchase it were you able to use it do you have any questions again I'm, I'm willing to let you know um, answer any questions as much as as my ability and my knowledge will let me again I'm not a makeup artist I'm I just watch a lot of makeup videos on YouTube that's all as far as my knowledge goes but I can help you out in the best way that I can again if you did like this video don't forget to give it a big old thumbs up and subscribe to my channel before you leave I really hope you're having a wonderful day or night wherever you are and hopefully I will see you right here on my next video bye guys